What's up, y'all? It's your girl Nikki coming to you from, you know, UrbanGirlFabulous.blogspot.com. Today is Tuesday, and of course, we are here for Talk Tuesday. So, I'm sure you probably know what I'm going to talk about. Over the weekend, the verdict was read for the George Zimmerman case, and he was found not guilty on any charges. As a mother, I was pissed off. I was beyond pissed. This man murdered someone, not killed, he murdered, in my opinion. He murdered this young boy, and the jury found him not guilty and they actually felt that he was defending himself. I wasn't there. They weren't there. They can only go by the evidence that was presented to them. But what I find to be very disturbing is the fact that this man admits to calling 911, George Zimmerman. He admits to calling 911. The 911 operator tells him, do not pursue the person. Do not get out of your vehicle. Red flag number one, in my opinion. I understand that he was the captain of his neighborhood watch and there had been some break-ins in the neighborhood. That's fine. Uh, I would too want to protect my neighborhood and if I see anything unusual, I would call the police because that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to take the law into your own hand. But that's another story. You follow this young man because I'm assuming he looks suspicious to you. You didn't see him approach any houses. You didn't see him acting strangely. You also told the police that they always get away. Who was they? that you were referring to. So, what pisses me off about this is that they're saying that George Zimmerman was defending himself. I like to think that I have a lot of common sense. I have a lot of book sense and I definitely have street smarts. How in the fuck can you be defending yourself if you pursued someone and you were told not to and we don't know what happened but why is it that he can be looked at as being the one who defended himself but Trayvon Martin was the aggressor maybe he should have ran but he shouldn't have to run in his neighborhood That little black boy was my son. He's your son. He's America's son. And I am so sick and tired of the lives of our black children not being valued. And we see it all the time. They try to make these comparisons to this case and the killings in Chicago. There are killings all over the United States all the time. And people do get upset about them. People do protest about them. People do make big stinks about them. But this was such a high profile case that we knew more about it than maybe the dealings that are going on in Chicago. But all you have to do is read, turn on your local news, go to the website and you can read about what's going on. You can also read about the people that are making a stance in Chicago that are trying to do better. There was an article in um, my Essence magazine a couple of months ago that I read about this woman who's like an interpreter that they call her and she goes in and she basically mediates peace amongst these kids because they're lost. But that has nothing to do with this coward of a man who hunted his prey because that's what he did. He hunted his prey and he got what he wanted. 
you do not knowingly get your ass out of your car knowing that you have a weapon on you because to me in my opinion you are already setting yourself up to do some harm you're already gonna make a situation bad why didn't you inform the 911 operator that you had a gun on you I'm sure as hell they would have definitely told you to make sure you stayed in your car you went out looking for trouble you were not out looking to protect your neighborhood you went out looking for trouble and that night you found it you found somebody who was afraid of you and they wanted to defend themselves but we will never see it like that most people won't see it like that all they see is Zimmerman protecting himself which is a bunch of bullshit you you can't protect yourself and defend yourself when you're the one who's the aggressor and you're the one who's attacking the people but that's what happened that's how they see it and the juror that was on CNN last night that lets me know you had incompetent people who are supposed to be this man's peers that let him go free how in the hell do you already have a book deal and the case just was over on Saturday but you already have a book deal Monday morning I find that ironic. I really do. I find that ironic. I find it hypocritical. You were so hurt by this case, and y'all did so much, and you were just crying on Anderson Cooper last night. But you got a book deal, chick. Hmm. That's real suiting for you, I guess. They say it's not a race thing, but it is a race thing. And that's one thing in America that we have got to stop sweeping under the rug. We have got to stop saying that it's not about race because it clearly was about race. He was profiled. And the prosecutor, I don't even want to talk about her right now. This is a race thing. It is a race thing. It's a race thing. It's a race thing. What are we going to do to make it better, though? I feel that we need to have open dialect. We need to address it and we need to own up to it. And I'm tired of people saying that, oh, you need to let it go. And it, it's coming from white people. You need to let it go. The jury found him not guilty. You need to just get over it. Who the hell are you to tell me to get over it? Who in the hell are you to tell me to let it go? See, the thing is, you will never, ever, 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 understand what it means to be a black person in America you never understand you can sympathize and empathize all day with my struggle but you will never understand what it feels like to be followed around for no reason you will never understand having to tell your child who's good kids and tell them you need to do this this and that because you are black I live in reality. I live in a reality world and I'm a realist. I talked to my son. I had that conversation with my oldest son. I told him, look, yes, it's fine and dandy. You may have all these type of friends, but if the cops come around, they will single you out. There could be other kids there. They will single you out. It's happened before. It's been proven. You have to act this way. You have to do things a certain way to protect yourself. So you don't become a target. So you don't become another Trayvon Martin. This isn't the first time that we haven't had justice. This, And it won't be the last. It won't be the last at all. But I believe that we need to definitely have open dialect. And we need to address this wound that is on America. But they just want to keep covering it up with bandages and putting another bandage on it and just keep covering it up. And we can't do that. We need to educate one another. You need to ask me why I feel so upset about this. And don't fucking tell me to get over it. Ask me why I'm mad. Ask me why is this affecting me and I, I have no relation to this boy because I, I am. We are entwined together because... We share similar struggles, and that's being black. I don't care how you call it. You may not want to admit it, and that's another thing. We need to admit this shit. We need to stop feeling as if it's not there. 
it's a race issue. And I'm not saying that every white person is racist or Hispanic or anything like that, but it is definitely a race issue. This young man was profiled and George Zimmerman killed him. Regardless, if you saying that you, he broke my nose, he was bashing my head into the concrete, and that's another thing. If you're getting your head truly bashed in, dude, you would have been unconscious. You probably would have suffered a concussion if your head was getting bashed in. But none of this would have happened if you never would have got your ass out your car and followed this young man. It never would have happened to begin with. What can you do to change? You can reach out to your community. You can be an active member in your community. You can be active in a multitude of programs out there to help the youth. You can educate one another. You can really truly talk to your friends of all races and acknowledge that there is a hurt and there is a pain there. But it starts with you. I have a very favorite saying from Gandhi, uh, be the change you want to see in the world. And to me, I interpret that as I need to be the change that I want to see in the world. Am I pissed about this outcome? I am very pissed because like I said, I have a son, I have two sons. And that could have been my son. That could have been your son, but he is our son. He was a child, his life was taken. And we don't want to admit, some don't want to admit that, why couldn't the tables been turned? Why couldn't he have been defending himself? So in the light of this tragedy and this murder, we need to find a way to communicate better. We need to find a way to make this place better for our children and their children and all the children of America. This will probably be the last time I talk about it because it's very upsetting and it's very saddening. But we have got to start being the change we want to see in the world. You may not reach a million people. It only takes reaching one person, just one. You reach that one person and then they're able to reach another person. And then they're able to reach another person until it'll start catching on like a ball rolling down a hill. It'll just catch on and catch on and pick up more speed and pick up more speed. But we have to communicate and we have to acknowledge that there's a hurt and we have to come up with ways to change it. This has got to stop. Our black children are worthy. My black children are worthy. Your black children are worthy. They are America's children. And we have got to start giving a damn about these kids and their future. All right, guys, that's it for Talk Tuesday. Y'all know where to find me. You can find me on Instagram at Urban Girl Fabulous, on Facebook at Urban Girl Fabulous. My blog is www.urbangirlfabulous.blogspot.com. And follow me on Twitter as well at Urban Girl Fab. Until next Tuesday, y'all, stay fabulous and start working on being the change you want to see in the world. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye.